Well, thank you, everyone. Uh, much appreciated. Uh, this is a uh, nearly packed house as far as uh, these events go. So, thank you for taking the time tonight. Um, it's a nice evening, and you've decided to spend it here, so we appreciate it. I'm Josh Morton. Uh, this is Brian Kelly. Uh, we collectively represent the uh, Northeast team uh, for absence. Uh, that means uh, for us, it's Eastern Canada, Ontario East, uh, New York, New England. Uh, as far as uh, smallish companies go, it's a uh, uh, fairly small territory. I used to cover California, Texas, and Colorado um, all at once, so this is uh, kind of a coming home party for me. Um, so, start in. A uh, bit of context for absence, because I, as I was looking through the news slides and all that, I realized that you know we cover a relatively narrowly focused part of virtualization, that being uh, VDI, if you will. Uh, and if you call Citrix Zen out virtualized, then we cover that too. Um, and I know a lot of you probably have different interests in what virtualization means to you. Some purely on the server side, maybe some of you, some of you are on the Linux side. Uh, just to give a sense of context, our three main partners uh, from AppSense are Microsoft, Citrix, and VMware, just to give you a sense of that. So we run on the Microsoft platform. Citrix and VMware are our two top delivery, delivery platform partners, if you will. Uh, as you can see here, um, we have been around for about 11 years. Quite a few customers, uh, most of the names up there you will recognize. Um, they are good for two reasons. Um, they, they have funded uh, us, we're, we have no venture capital money at all. Uh, the other thing too is, in terms of, for your benefit, uh, they're on our product advisory councils. Um, they've used our software to, uh, in the tens of thousands of users. What that means is that it gives us great product roadmaps, gives us great insight into what 18 and 36 months look like down the road for you. And uh, they've done all the QA for you. So. You can thank them. Uh, again, this Brian's going to get into the, the, the technical side and do the deep dive, but just so you're aware of some of the problems we solve, um, it seems you know, for this group, um, this is the VDI side is probably the single most important part. Um, heard the gentleman talking about you know what technologies you use, what stacks you use. Tyler get up and uh, show his uh, his product, which is uh, one of these emerging companies you hear about that does some uh, wizard-like things on the uh, scalability monitoring side. Um, we focus on the profiles, and if any of you have experience in end-user computing, where profile is probably a four-letter word in your vocabulary, especially if it's a roaming profile, right? Everyone, um, you know, what are the issues there? What they corrupt all the time. They're slow to, slow to log on. Um, you either on the back end is, um, you know, 5,000 lines of archaic script to do everything from idiosyncratic registry key settings to drive mappings, right? They're just... They're a technology from a long ago age that have been retrofitted into modern day and next generation desktops. That's what we look to replace. And there's a lot of different ways in which we can enable what you're trying to achieve if you're going to virtual desktops. So again, just, just on the basic one, if you go to Gartner, you go to Forrester, or IDC, uh, they'll show you this. Uh, if, if you're looking at your employee base right now, and you're wondering you know, who are the uh, most likely candidates uh, for your virtual desktop infrastructure, um, task workers are great because uh, they're stationary. Typically, they are somewhat nearby to a data center, so uh, connectivity servers are nearby. Um, as you go out on this curve, on the bell curve, uh, it gets increasingly more difficult to provide virtualized solutions to these users. <coughs> uh, mobile work is obviously being uh, the most difficult. Uh, on a plane, it doesn't work well, it doesn't have Wi Fi to get virtualized apps there if you want to stream them. Um, and the knowledge workers are hit and miss. Um, you know, it can be a lot of different things. Uh, you know, engineers, can you really stream an application to an engineer if it's really heavy duty? Does that make sense? Um, some of you may have uh, engineering groups overseas. You need to keep the data here in the US. Uh, can you stream the entire desktop? Can you stream an application? Um, those are all considerations that, that all of you have to make. Um, the gentleman talked about, you know, there's so many people. It's like the Wild West out there in terms of the technology stack you can use right now to get a virtual desktop or even to get an application um, to a customer. I mean, it was pretty, uh, pretty binary before. It was either a desktop or, say, Citrix, you know, a little uh, presentation server at the time, and you had two options. Um, the advent of uh, Brian's former company, Softricity, which turned into AppV, um, changed the game a bit on that one. Uh, all of a sudden, they had a really whiz-bang technology streaming, the, uh, streaming and isolating the application. And a long time ago, we started working with a company called Artis, this uh, slightly uh, very smallish company with big aspirations right down the street, literally. Uh, in Waltham, uh, which was acquired by Citrix, uh, streaming the entire operating system, which ultimately, coupled with a couple other technologies, became Zen Desktop um, and Zen Server. So uh, we've, had, we've seen the, the market evolve where 
the permutations of delivering the very same desktop you delivered six or seven years ago in two different fashions can be done about 20 different ways. You know, whether it's a physically installed OS and streamed applications, whether it's a streamed OS with locally installed applications in that gold image, whether everything's streamed. You have a lot of options, a lot of complexity. So um, our software looks to address the complexity associated with those user profiles. Because if you think about hard, it's always been those profiles. You know, wait till you introduce dynamically streamed desktops and dynamically created applications streamed out. Um, it gets infinitely more complex and more difficult to keep that user data both stable and mobile and portable to, that, to, the, uh, to the worker. And being able to, the holy grail, obviously, of virtual desktops is a very small footprint on the back end, right? Nobody wants to pay for storage costs. Because if you accept to take you have a thousand workers, give them all virtual desktops on a one-to-one -one basis, you've just got very expensive desktops in a data center somewhere. The idea being that you have a very small number of gold images, you have dynamically provisioned applications, and they go out to a large number of users through you know, Citrix or VMware, or whatever, or Microsoft, whatever technology you choose to deliver that, but it has to start small and go out to a wide group of users. And that's some of the technology that we enable at the end user level. Brian will go through it. And again, I'm going to jump over to Brian right now. Um, but again, if, you've, if, like, if you work in this environment, this is nothing new to you. This just reinforces the area of emphasis that we uh, focus on. <laughs> And questions, uh, you can ask me questions. I think you'd be better served waiting for Brian because he'll give you the technical answers and not yes like the sales guy does. So hmm? thank you very much. Over to you, Brian. Okay. Uh, so as Josh was mentioning, uh, we deal in user environment management. And so he did mention the word profile, but uh, I just want to emphasize that we're not just profiles. In fact, we don't even use the profile. Um, we treat that user settings that would normally be found in a profile in a different way. Uh, so for example, uh, I've got a little setup here that I just want to uh, run through so you know what's going on. Uh, I do have a domain controller, uh, which is pretty plain to know at the moment, but uh, it's a domain controller running our software. So it's just doing all the bulk work, uh, but we do have a web server and a back-end database, and that's all running on the DC. So when I, I'm going to do a quick little show of what the end result looks like, but then I'm going to come back in and show you how we made that happen. And I'm connecting to Citrix. Uh, on the other side, I have an XP workstation. Uh, right now I've logged in. I was just trying to, I didn't know how much time we ended up having, so saving a little time of the demo, shortcutting a little bit. Uh, but the idea is I have a, a desktop and uh, and what we've done is we have different types of users. He was showing you that we have different types of task users, different types uh, of knowledge-based workers. So I have an engineer. And now normally to get this type of desktop to that user, we would have had a combination of login scripts and profiles. And so whether that's mandatory profile, roaming profile, hybrid profile, but that combination would have said, when I come to this machine here, it looks like me, has the bald head, I, this is my environment, has my shortcuts. But you had a say in that too. You probably wanted to specify uh, you know, how the start menu should look, which applications uh, should be available. So what we're going to do is we're going to combine the, the two of those, uh, what we call policy and personalization. So right now, for example, some of the policy that I've applied uh, to this is drive mappings. So a lot of things that you might have done either in a login script or policies, not saying you don't you know, toss them all away, uh, but what we're going to do is we're going to provide you what we think is a better way of, of doing uh, a lot of both of those tasks, both login scripts and policy based. But as an engineer, I log in, I have my engineering home drive map. If I want to look at my printers, I have settings, printers, oh, there's the engineering printer. Okay. But if I log off on this XP machine, and log in as, say, the accountant, sorry, this laptop's a little slow. 